Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to take this idea of Newton's second law, remember F equals MA, and we're going to apply it to vertical instead, all right? So for us to do that, we have to be really confident or solid on two terms, mass and weight. Up until this point, probably most of your class you've had or just even your day-to-day -day speech, the words mass and weight have been pretty interchangeable, right? Oh, what's your weight? Oh, I weigh 200 pounds. Oh, what's your mass? Oh, I weigh, you know, 100 kilograms, whatever it happens to be. Um, and anywhere besides the world of engineering and physics, it's really easy to confuse these two or to use them interchangeable because we measure our weight in the United States in pounds. The rest of the world measures their mass in kilograms. And we have converters between the two. Now that works fine because we're on the surface of our planet. But if we were to move to a different planet or go to the moon or even go to the top of Mount Everest or the bottom of our oceans, the people who have a certain mass, that mass would stay the same. However, our weight in pounds would vary based off of our location. So the way that we kind of determine how big we are um, by weight is actually kind of flawed in that way. All right. So let's go through kind of a little bit of idea on this. Mass. Mass, remember, is the amount of matter in an object. Right. It's the same no matter your location. It's measured in kilograms. So highlight this word, highlight this, underline this. Mass is measured in kilograms. Okay. In the world of physics, we have equations that have both mass and weight in them at the same time. So we have to have a distinction between what is mass and what is weight. Weight is the force that gravity pulls on an object. Okay. So weight is dependent on the gravitational pull of our planet. Okay. It is measured in newtons. All right. So if you actually were to measure the weight of somebody in the SI system, you wouldn't use kilograms, you wouldn't use pounds, you would use the newton. All right. If we apply this idea of the weight being the force that gravity is pulling on an object, um, and we apply that to our second law of motion, F equals MA, and we realize that acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, what we can do is we can say that if we want to find the weight of an object, that is actually the same thing as the force of gravity. It is not little g. This is not gravity. This is the acceleration from gravity. Okay? There is, seems similar, but there's a big distinction. This is an acceleration. This is the force. Okay? This is the weight. So the weight of an object, you take the mass of the object in kilograms, multiply it by g. This is something we know. Little g, the acceleration. So the accelerations that we feel times our mass will give us our weight or our force. Okay. This particular little kind of snippet here is important because as we start looking at friction and vertical forces and vertical movement, um, we're going to go back to this equation many times throughout the year in terms of determining what's going on when we have things moving vertically. All right. Let's do a little example problem to go with this. The world record moose. I'm assuming it's one that's been shot. Maybe not. Maybe they like put some scales out there for it to stand on. Who knows? But the world record moose has a mass of 1,043 kilograms. How much did it weigh? Okay. Now, we're not asking for it in pounds. We're asking for it in newtons. Well, we know the mass is this. The acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So this is a pretty simple example. We just take the mass of this times 9.81, and we get a force or a weight of 10,020 newtons. Okay. Um, as we do this, keep in mind it's pretty common, especially the next few days when we start talking about friction and combined forces and angles, that we might know the mass of a substance and we want to know its weight. Okay, um, don't let that bog you down. If you know the mass of something, anytime you know its mass, you can find its weight. They're not the same thing, but all you have to do is take the mass times g. And that will give you your weight in newtons because weight is a force measured in newtons. All right, guys, I'm going to end the thing there, and we'll talk about Newton's third law in our next video. Thank you.